Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Dims. Today I'm going to explain algorithms. You need this for both your theory question papers, but also for your PAT phase 1. All grades can benefit from this lesson. So first you want to imagine the code as Delphi code. And then you want to replace everywhere where you would use a variable like I count, just replace it with a name like count instead of adding the prefix for the data type. Everywhere where you would have used an assignment statement, replace that with an arrow pointing from the right to the left to indicate the right gives a value to the left. You will not be using object names, so instead of using um, edit edt name, we'll just say input from the user for the name. And then we don't include begins and ends. You are going to indicate begins and ends by indenting your code underneath that structure to show that there is a begin and an end. Later when you know loops, you will include um, an end to indicate the end of a loop, especially when there's more than one line of code inside of that loop. But you will still make use of indentation to indicate what goes inside of the loops. So here is an algorithm of finding the highest score of values entered. There's no loops here. So for grade 10s, this will be applicable to you as well. Um, at the top here, I wrote when the program starts. So in Delphi code, that really means in form on activate. I'm going to set the counter to zero. So this is similar to saying I count is assigned to zero. This will be my global variable. Then in the button, I'm going to store a score. You'll see instead of the assignment statement, I now have the arrow. And I just say input from the user. I don't have to include type casting, in, in other words, string to int or string to float in my algorithms. I'm just going to say there's going to be input from the user and I'm going to store it as score. And now I'm going to use score everywhere else in my algorithm. So that's the same for string input. We're just going to say name instead of s name, input from the user. And here is my code as I would use it in Delphi where I add one. I'm going to say counter is assigned to counter plus one. The assignment statement is now an arrow and I don't have a semicolon at the end and I'm not using I count as I would in Delphi. My if statements here are very similar to what I use in Delphi but as you can see, I have indented under the if, and that indicates that there's a beginning and an end, so that these two lines of code is underneath the if. Then I have an else, and indented, I am testing if the current score is higher than the previous high score, and this if statement also has a beginning and end indicated by an indent. And then finally, make sure that you now don't indent anymore because as this is outside of my if statements. I then have display high score and high name. High score uh, is the value that is given here at the top in the if statements and high name is the values given for the name um, stored as high name. Great tens, if you don't know loops and string handling yet, you can stop watching. But for the rest of you, this is from a past paper, November 2019, a theory question where we had to write an algorithm. And the question was that if a value like this was entered, we had to produce these stars. In other words, the 5 there is 5 stars, then the 3, and then the 4. So there's two examples of um, input and output here, but let me show you the algorithm. So the first thing you want to do is imagine the code in Delphi and then you want to write your algorithm. Remember in theory, if you would write Delphi code, we would still mark it. But if you make any small little syntax error, you will lose a mark like for getting a semicolon at the end of the line. So it is safer to learn how to create or write algorithms. So first I have the S input, that is input from the user. In this paper, they did use the little s, but you don't have to. You could just say 
number, for example. Now for a loop structure, have a look at what the code looks like for a loop structure when we have to write an algorithm. We're going to say I'm looping using i as my for loop from 1 to the length of the input that I have at the top. Now remember we don't include the do, we don't include any data types here when we are writing an algorithm. You will see that the next, the following lines here are all indented. That means there was a beginning and an end here for this loop. And I am initializing S line with an empty string. You can see using the arrow instead of an assignment statement. And then in the next line, I am setting in. And you can see there is no typecasting here. So there's no string to end. I am setting in there to the character I'm currently at. So the first time it loops, it would be the first character. That first example had a 5 in there, so n will now be 5. I now have a nested loop here, and I'm looping j from 1 to that n. This n and that n is the same number. Here it was a string, here it was an integer, but we don't have to indicate that in our algorithms. And here I am building a string of stars. So instead of the assignment statement, again where I have my arrow, and I'm just adding to S line, I'm adding the star. Now instead of saying here reach editor.lines.add, I just say display S line, the line that I've built just now. This is the memo from the final of 2019 paper 2. As you can see, they did not include ends for your loop but I would include an end here to say end loop j, just to be safe. And then aligned with this loop here, after my display, I will add end loop i. Thank you everyone for watching Dandelion Dims. Make sure that you practice your algorithms before you write an exam. You can find more examples and the memos are also included in my Dims workbook. Please leave some comments if you have any questions and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Hope to see you soon!